Hey guys, I'm Time Itself. I know this video is going to be kind of geeky, but uh, I love it, so, you know, uh, sit down and enjoy. If it's not your thing, too bad. You're missing out. I'm going to be going over statistics and probability for shotguns. I'm going to try to spice things up with a little gameplay, though. In this first shotgun probability video, I'm going to be going over the method of how I'm going to be looking at the different shotguns and the proficiencies, the perks, all that stuff, and then we're going to talk about steady aim and how it's the spread, not the damage drop-off, that's the limiting factor for your shotguns. But first, I need to make a quick overview of how bullets and damage work in Call of Duty games, just for the few people who aren't familiar with this. When the bullets or shotgun pellets leave your gun, they're doing maximum damage right up close. And they do they do the same maximum damage out to some range, and it's based on the gun and if you've got some proficiencies or attachments. But until they get to that range, they do that maximum damage. However, once they get there, the damage starts to fall off until it gets to another distance where it reaches another fixed minimum damage. Most guns, once they get to that minimum damage, they just make the bullets keep going, and they're just doing minimum damage. However, for shotguns, the pellets disappear. But over the range where the damage is dropping off, it's going to take more and more shots to hit before you'll score that kill. Now, when you normally fire your gun, you shoulder it, the bullets go exactly where the gun is pointed. Uh, things like sway and recoil, and <laughs> yeah, I know I argue sometimes too with the game, but they go exactly where the gun is pointed. However, using a shotgun or hip firing, instead the shotgun pellets or the bullets go somewhere inside the cone of the reticle. And you don't know where they go, it's, it's basically just random. Okay, but this leads me to the first assumption that I'm going to be making in this analysis. I don't find it to be much of a stretch, but I do need to tell you about this. That is, I'm going to assume that a pellet goes somewhere in that cone, but the probability of hitting anywhere in there, it's completely even around the entire cone. So it could go on the edge of it, could go in the center, equal probabilities of both of those things happening. The other thing I'm going to say is that the pellets are all completely independent. Where one goes has no bearing on where the others go. So you don't get a nice spread. They could all end up on the left half of that cone. They could all end up on the top. They could all even go straight down the middle. <laughs> that would be kind of freaky. But yeah, I'm saying that's a possibility. There's no fixed pattern that the pellets can form to. They just go somewhere there randomly. Reason is, well, this kind of looks like what I've seen and going to make the rest of this analysis a whole lot easier. The next thing, I'm going to assume that aim is not an issue. It can be kind of tricky lining a shot up, hip firing from a reasonable distance, but it adds too many variables to this, and we want to consider a best case scenario. What could you do if you were amazing with a shotgun, and you were only fighting for probability on that hip spread and trying to get enough pellets to land to kill your target? Alright, so the first thing I need is the probability that an individual pellet will hit given the distance to the target and the cone of spread on my weapon. So a little trig there is a tangent actually. And you get the radius on well, the other end of the cone. And so I'm only working with one variable at that point. Now I took some screenshots of my friend, uh, the XM25, walked it out to exactly 9 meters and found that, that was about 5 degrees of spread. Makes the guy is about just over 2 meters tall. So then I took the screenshot and I cut it out and I measured pixels and I went around and I did some integration and you know did the area based on the cone, blah blah blah. Anyway, long story, I managed to get a correlation for that radius on the other end there to the probability that an individual pellet would hit if it was the probability was just based on the area of the player inside of the circle that made by that cone where the pellets could go. Makes sense? Okay, I, I think we're good. So at this point, I have to say that the graphs aren't what I wanted. I was trying to teach myself some new programming and plotting tools. I just wasn't getting far enough along, and I wanted to go ahead and put this out. I mean, it's been several months at this point. I, I think I, I did this before Infinity Ward uh, changed the uh, buffed the shotguns, and I was going to make fun of apps, how absolutely terrible they were. Then, then they fixed things, and it wasn't quite the issue. Anyway, this has been a long time coming, but... This is what I've got, and I think it tells a pretty good story. First, here are the stats I'm using. Uh, big thanks to the guys over at Dense Forums. I'll leave a link to them in the description, as this wouldn't be possible without them. 
I'm using 40 units or inches to the meter. So, uh, whatever, good enough. All right, so what are we looking at? Well, the x-axis is milliseconds, and uh, it's decided by the fire time on the guns and how many rounds per minute they can shoot. Uh, the strikers fired at its maximum fire rate, so kind of optimistic, but hey, that's, that's what we got. The y-axis is the probability that you've hit enough damage on target at the, at the range that you've scored a kill at that point. So you'll see most of the guns, 90% or better. I don't take it as exact. I, I should have made that clear in the approximation of the probability, but it, it's good for comparison. So the Spaz in blue, the KSG in red, the 1887 in green, the USS in purple, the Striker in light blue, and the AA-12 in orange. And even at four meters, you're gonna take a couple shots to get a kill with the AA-12. Moving out to five, and things become more interesting. This distance is going to be hard to get two kills with the AA-12, and the extra spread on the 1887 absolutely kills it. That's why you get things like this. And just why? Why didn't I get a kill there? I, I don't know. That's because there's ridiculous spread on the 1887. The damage drop off for the 1887 doesn't even start until seven and a half meters. So it's the spread. It's not the damage drop. It even maintains pretty good damage out to its maximum range. Well, let's keep going. As we go further out, it becomes more and more apparent which shotguns simply benefit from being able to throw lots of damage downrange, specifically the USAS and the Striker. The Striker is not quite as powerful as it had been, but still, it can throw a lot of pellets out. And I'm not going to spend too long on this because, suffice to say, it gets pretty dismal pretty fast, and uh, the damage drop off for a lot of the guns starts about 10 meters. So, you'll see by that point, it doesn't matter that's taking more pellets to kill. I mean, it does absolutely make them useless past that point, but they're already pretty ineffective uh, even before you get to that damage drop off. So, if you didn't already know, steady aim reduces the reticle spread. It includes shotguns for some reason. So, as long as you don't shoulder the gun, the pattern is tighter, smaller cone, more accurate, and if you can be on target, it's going to make a huge difference for the shotguns. So, here are the graphs. Steady aim increasing the probability that those pellets hit makes a dramatic improvement. But even at fairly close ranges, by five meters we were seeing quite a bit of spread, but here we're out to seven meters and all the guns? Yeah, sure, worth a shot. Let's get to eight. Yeah, okay, the 1887 isn't faring so well, but the KSG and SPAS still look like they work pretty well even at eight meters as long as you've got steady aim. So here's the story at 10 meters. The SPAS, KSG, and USAS all still have maximum damage. The reason why it's not a very high probability of getting killed, even when you're perfectly on target with steady aim, is because of that spread. Whereas the 1887, yeah, it's got some damage drop off happening, but it's still pretty high. Your more important is how many pellets it actually takes to kill. A12, obviously, if you're using it this range, you're doing it wrong. The Striker, it's started to have its damage drop off, but it does still pretty well just because it can shoot so much ammo. Uh, the thing is that it's kind of hard to land a steady aim shot at that kind of distance. So while I'm saying optimistically things don't look so great, especially for the 1887, well, 1887 is a little more forgiving. Yeah, that's one way to put it. So still, I wouldn't try to use it at that range and expect to get a kill. The KSG fares quite well. It's at maximum range, uh, all things considered, though I still wouldn't really want to be forced to use it at that range. You might get lucky, but uh, I wouldn't count on it. All right, I think that's about enough for one video. We'll do damage and range for Modern Warfare 3 shotguns next. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to be notified when that's posted, or if it's already up, there's a link on the screen. Uh, anyway, let's see. Stats, people, it's a binomial distribution or sampling with replacement. Fairly simple. It's why I made some of those assumptions, because it makes things quite nice. Uh, otherwise, the most complicated part is actually going in and tracking points around a screenshot to get the uh, regression for probability based on the cones rate, yeah, blah, blah. I need to stop geeking out and just go play some more Modern Warfare. I suggest you do the same. I want to apologize for not getting this video out to you sooner, all this information, because I really wanted to make some really awesome graphs, and it just it didn't come together. It was too much work, and I didn't feel like I wanted to keep this to myself any longer. I'll share with you guys. Uh, find it enjoyable, good information, and if you ever ran your shotguns without the aim before, I hope I've changed your mind about doing that. But, uh, maybe even sparked a little curiosity about some stats and probability. Who knows? Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. So, a uh, couple recent videos I've done. I also did 
I was trying to teach myself this plotting thing. It's time to kill for the various guns. Kind of cool. It's a, you know, a different way to visualize the data. And if you've had enough graphs and just want to watch video of people running around, rushing like crazy and making people rage, well, here's a Black Ops video for you. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.